date. This is not my magenta printhead. This is actually an old black printhead that has been sitting around for about at least four years or more. Actually, it's two. Um, but that said, my magenta printhead is completely dead for sure. But what I just because I was curious as to know to know how it all is put together and where a failure point could occur. Uh, um, I decided to break, actually, both of them, because uh, uh, maybe I could find a way to fix it. What I found was, yeah, there's pretty much no way to fix it. Um, so it, I also read up on where common failure points occur in print heads like this. And it turns out to be there's two common ones. One, it, which the Brother GT541 uh, tends to be, if the print head dies, it dies. Mainly because the filter is bent, built in deep in the head, whereas apparently in the GT341, uh, they've accounted for that issue by designing an external replaceable cheap filter. That you should replace all the time. Um, that said, I'm sure it's prone to failure as well. So, to start out, basically, here is a print head with the uh, support arm and handle bracket removed. Uh, all it is is this tiny little circuit board with a heat sink with a ribbon cable going down to this part right here. Come on, focus. There we go. So, to this section right here. And as you can see, with all those little highlighted holes, those are your nozzles. That's what's firing the ink out onto whatever you're printing on. Anyway, so start with this part. This whole contraption right here is just, all it is is a flow control little feed cartridge tube thing. Yes, I ripped all the little sidewalls off, which is weird that it's, all the sidewalls are made out of this really flimsy film, but cheap, it's cheap to make, I guess. Uh, anyway, um, so all it's, the only purpose is, is if you had the tube coming straight into this and then feeding directly into it, the, the gravity pressure of everything would cause ink to just kind of constantly drain out all the time and, and flow out. So all this does is it allows ink to come in, go up through this side, this little channel right here, and come out and go through these tiny little holes in each corner. Those tiny little holes, let's see if you can see it through the plastic. See, you can see the black channel right there and right there come out these little nozzles. These little nozzles have these nice little O-rings. So yeah. And it and then you have this middle bracket plate right here. And that finally attaches to here, which is a former print head with everything ripped off and broken and taken a hammer to, just because I wanted to see all the channels and see exactly what could happen. Um, the thing is, between the two points here, if you see that black, this black hole here, this black hole here, those are your inlet channels. On top of that, it's hard. It's it's super tiny. Let's see. Come on. Is this tiny little filter? And the only thing holding this filter on to this right now is like static electricity and whatnot. It is absolutely wafer thin. 
And as you can see in this one, because this print head died and then we it got left alone, there's tons of buildup on, on it. This is one of the main failure points. Uh, um, as this filter gets clogged, because it, all it is is a tiny piece of absolutely thin metal, if this thing gets clogged, there is no ink flow into those two channels. But uh, uh, when you come over to this side, or let's look at the side first. So in between, there's this ceramic channel diverter piezo transducer component that uh, um, has multiple sandwiching layers. But uh, um, And then you have these tracks uh, uh, on this side, which it is part of an electroconductive point that pulls ink through and pushes it out. However, this is not the full part of it, obviously. You co we come to these com the the middle part here. Well, here here's a more familiar piece. Let's go from here. And then here's the other part. So this part is since it's broken in half, you can actually see all, all the time all those little black lines right there. Can you let's see if I can get a good visual? There we go. All those little black channels are the are the feed lines into each individual nozzle. At first, I thought that these were some of the feed channels, but it turns out that these are just uh, heat sink fins uh, to protect the piezotransducer nozzles. Uh, nozzles. Um, well, and this is the more critical, unsalvageable um, point of a print head, is that um, over time, whether it be in here, uh, on, on the, oh, crap, this, uh, on this wafer thin filter or deep inside the print head, there's always a buildup. Um, ink, that's why, uh, uh, a lot of the time brother says if a print head dies, replace the tube. There's buildup in the tube. There, there's always going to be some sort of ink that sticks to the walls and dries up just a little bit and clings and makes a little bit of a like a, 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 a sludge. Well, when it builds up on these, you, per, you usually just have to kind of like flush the lines with something, some sort of clean, cleaner. However, if you get a full-on print head buildup where somewhere inside here or inside these uh, um, there's a clog. If you try to flush the lines and flush the head, you basically kind of ruin it permanently. Because um, instead, instead of cleaning it completely off the lines, what all you end up doing is all the little buildup that's in this part, or all the little buildup that's that's in these tiny little ch channels, basically gets flushed out and into the nozzles. And so you end up with a very dead head, like I did. Um, the filters... It's not a serviceable part, to be honest. Um... It, you literally have to take off the head itself from this whole support system, and getting that back in line is pretty much impossible without the right equipment. So when you try to install it, it nothing it will ever be aligned again. Um, there's about just a, like a fraction of a millimeter, but that's enough. 
Whereas when they assemble these, it's most likely in a jig that is perfectly aligned. And then they, then they, then they calibrate them. As such, yeah. Like I said, this is a dead head. It is fully clogged to no end. Um, you can still see like that. It there's it was dead long ago. Um, same with this one, uh, because it was also left to sit for about four years. Well, one of these was, and one was even older than that. So, um, once you let ink go off and get hard inside of a print head, it's toast. Um, the lines, sometimes they can be salvageable, but print heads are kind of one of those you might be able to get to, to save it if it's if it's above the print above the uh, print head filter, you might be so so all that you have to clear out is say this and maybe this part and everything above it. But if it's if it's gone off so bad that it's gotten past this point, it's toast.